Okay, so this is the situation that I'm at so far in my 6502 CPU project. Um, I have managed to put the program counter board and get that working, and um, that's sort of my version 1.1 program counter. I think that's pretty good and stable. Um, the rest of it is sort of in the prototype phase. But now I've got a new board here, which is the memory board. So this isn't strictly part of the CPU itself, but you can't really have a CPU without having some memory for it to operate on. So I've got to obviously have some memory. I've got to have some input and some output and stuff like that. So what this board does is it provides um, some ROM and some RAM. So I'm going to solder one of these up and I'll connect it up and check that it works. Okay, so every time I make one of these boards, there's like about a 50% chance that I will make a tiny little mistake on it somewhere. And so true to form, I have made a mistake on this one. Just here, I got uh, something connected up that shouldn't have been connected up. I had to make a tiny little modification, but um, slight bodge in there, but I think it's going to be okay. So this is the memory board. Now the 6502 CPU is an 8-bit CPU. It's got a 16-bit address bus, which means it can access or address 64k of memory um, so I've got a couple of chips here I've got first of all I've got the this is a 64k static RAM chip and that is a UM61512 um, so that's 64k of RAM so that's that would actually by itself fill up the whole of the address space with RAM and here is my long one of my long suffering EPROMs this is one of those Atmel uh, 32K um, EE proms, which are pretty cheap on eBay. Um, and I've had to do a little bit of bodging on here to fit in with the other bodge that I made on the board to get this thing working. Um, so that's 32K of ROM, and that goes there. And that's 64K of RAM, but I just said that 6502 can only address 64k of memory in total so what I'm doing on this board is really just like wasting some of the RAM by laying ROM over the top of it so you only get a 64k of memory in total and some of it will be taken up by ROM and all the rest will be taken up by RAM and so there'll be some memory locations where there's ROM and RAM and you'll just get the ROM at those memory locations so the ROM sort of over overlays the RAM effectively so you can't actually access the underlying RAM um, it's pretty straightforward. I've just got a, some chips to do a little bit of address decoding uh, because I want to uh, be able to change the way that the ROM and the RAM work. So I've got these these jumpers here, a couple of jumpers here, uh, which you can switch around. And there's three different combinations of them. So you can choose to either have the simplest combo, which is 32 gb ROM, 32 gb RAM or a slightly, probably more useful 48K of RAM and 16K of ROM, or maybe even 56K of RAM and 8K of ROM. And in the world of the 6502, the RAM normally sits at the bottom so that the 6502 can use its zero page trick, and the ROM normally sits at the top, but I thought that might be a bit inconvenient when I'm testing things out, so I've also put a jumper here which can flick the two over and make the ROM appear at the bottom and the RAM at the top or the other way around, depending on which one you want. Um, and like all my other boards in this project, it's got the data bus available in four places on the board. Uh, you can store a value, so you're gonna be, it treats it like a, treats this thing like a register really. You put the program counter 16-bit address in here uh, and you put in a couple of in, uh, controls here to say whether you want to store the value of the data bus into it or read out a value onto the data bus. So it's not, it's not a very complicated thing. So I'll plug that in. Uh, it's going to go over here, I think, and I'll see if I can get it working. Okay, so I've connected up the 16-bit program counter coming from here over to here. I've connected up a couple of controls to my switches. Nine for store and 10 for publish into the memory board and um, it's got a couple of LEDs on which are just going out of shot a little bit. One to tell you if RAM is currently selected and one to tell you if ROM is currently selected. I think it's that way around. So let's have a little look if we, so yes, so this is my program counter value here. So we're currently at location zero. If we 
publish, which is switch 10, you publish the value of location 0. So there's 127 apparently in that location. I'm not sure if that's the ROM or the RAM actually at this point. And if we increase the program counter by 1, so we're now at program counter location 1, and publish again, there's 7. So it's got 127, uh, 127 then 7. Increase again. So that should be, so that's memory location 2. That's got 253 in it. So this is these are looking like random kind of numbers. I'm thinking, well, I don't know, actually, that could be RAM or ROM, couldn't it, depending on what I've got stored in that ROM. Well, I'll tell you what, let's try storing a value in there. So if we set on my keyboard a value of a nice, easy number like 15. Right, so I'm publishing the keyboard value of 15 onto the data bus there. So we've got 15 coming from this keyboard here. Uh, we're going to store it in location 2. So let's publish it onto the data bus and store with switch 9. So store onto location 2. Uh, so that should have stored 15 onto location 2 and published location 2. It's got 253 still in it. So I think we're currently looking at ROM, which is actually what I would expect because I'm in my mode where ROM is at the bottom of memory. So location 2 has got a value of 253 in it. And even if we try and store something in there, we can't because this is ROM. So we're not going to be able to store anything in it. So let's jump a higher up into the memory then. So let's jump up to pretty near the top of memory where we should expect to find some RAM. Let's stick 255 into the high location, the high bytes of the program counter. So that's, there we go. So we've got 255. So my program counter is, whatever that is, nearly, nearly the top of memory, isn't it? So that's 255 times 256 plus two, whatever that number is. Um, so let's bung a value into there. Well, let's see what value's in it for a start. So if we publish that, uh, 125 is currently in there. Let's put a nice easy number like 1 in it. So publish 1 and store it in that memory location. So stored 1 in there. Take that off there so we can just check we're not cheating. Publish. Yeah, okay, so that's definitely RAM. So I've stored a value of 1 into whatever that memory location is there. I'll tell you what, let's go right to the top of memory. So location 65535. So if we shove... 255. Oh, look, I've had an idea. Instead of doing it from the keyboard, I'll publish that onto the address bus, which I can do with 7, and store that into the low value of the program counter, which I can do with that. Oh, I have to clock that. So the, the storing into the program counter is synchronous, so I have to do the clock pulse as well which is on key one, which is out of shot, actually. Um, so that has got uh, the highest possible memory location on the program counter. Let's check what's in the highest possible memory location, 65535. Oh, that's nice, there's a 255 in it. So let's put, well, let's put a zero in it, shall we? So we'll publish a zero and we'll store that in memory. There we go, and publish in memory, there's a zero in it. Great. That wasn't very eye-catching, was it? Let's put a 15 in it. Publish, publish 15, store with 9, 15, take it off there, and publish 15. There we go. Um, so I can definitely read from ROM, which is at the bottom of memory. I can write to RAM, which is at the top of memory. 